of the Senate Select Committee on Manufactured Home Communities and State Auditor Elaine Howell. The state audit requested by Senator Leva of the Department of Housing and Community Development, or HCD, paraphrased, uh, and the Mobile Home Inspection Program in the Division of Codes and Standards uh, can be found at auditor.ca.gov. So you can also Google Senator Connie Leva, and on her webpage, we have the link as well available for the audit. You can follow along with the presentation at that point. At the end of the auditor's presentation, we will have also a question and answer section. We've had questions submitted to uh, the Senate Select Committee's office uh, from across the state. Uh, and at the end of the presentation and the question and answer period, we shall also have information about additional mobile home resources. Today's questions are focused specifically on the state audit. To start our conversation and introduce our state auditor is Senator Connie Leva, who has been successful in passing legislation to ensure that mobile home communities get equal access to housing resources supporting residents with the opportunity to purchase their also their mobile home parks as well and to secure over 30 million dollars in the state housing bond that the voters recently approved to improve the quality of life in mobile home parks with us this afternoon is senator connie leva good afternoon senator leva good afternoon eric thank you very much and thank you to everyone who's participating it's so great to see you all virtually uh some of you have probably attended some of our town halls which we miss doing during covid but we want to make sure we keep you up to date and informed with what's going on so thank you for joining us today uh and as well as to those who subjective submitted questions earlier we will be getting to those a little later this webinar promises to be an informative event it has truly been a pleasure for me to serve as the chair of the Senate Select Committee on Mobile and Manufactured Homes for the last six years. In this capacity, I've had the opportunity to learn about many diverse issues that affect mobile home communities up and down the state and issues that affect the residents that live in those mobile home communities, from Humboldt County to Coachella and even the Inland Empire where I live. Mobile home communities are a vital part of affordable housing here in California. Today's conversation is so important in order to keep this housing option available. We must ensure that mobile home parks are being inspected and maintained properly. I requested this audit of the California Department of Housing and Community Development, HCD, because this department is a state enforcing entity for mobile home parks. It is critical that HCD functions effectively so we can have healthy mobile home communities. Today, we are very fortunate and lucky to have our state auditor, Elaine Howell, who will give a summary of the audit. This is a unique opportunity as part of our select committee, the first time ever we've had our state auditor speak directly to the communities living in mobile home parks across California. For over 20 years, California State Auditor Elaine Howe has served the California Senate, the, the California, the state of California, sorry, I always want to say Senate, but I'm not alone, uh, by providing accurate, unbiased, and timely assessments of state and local government entities. Ms. Howell is frequently called upon to provide testimony in legislative hearings and has been recognized nationally for her work and her leadership. We are so happy to have her with us today. Thank you very much, California State Auditor Elaine Howell. Take it away. Thank you so much, Senator Leva, and welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. I hope this is very informative uh, for you, and I look forward to sharing the results of the audit and also answering uh, many of the really good questions that were submitted to Senator Leva uh, with respect to this particular audit. So what I'd like to do is we'll share on the screen uh, a briefing document that we put together uh, that really summarizes uh, the results of the audit. So share over here. So, so as you can see um, on this particular first page, we had multiple uh, recommendations related to specific areas that we identified as problems uh, with respect to HCD's uh, operations and management of this program for inspecting mobile home parks throughout California. One of the first key issues, number one here, we're saying expand park inspections to include parks it hasn't visited. Now there is a statutory requirement 
that uh, the department visit um, at least 5% of the, of the parks each year. And they met the statutory requirement, but we were disappointed to see that there were many parks in California that had not been visited by HCD in the last, in a 10 year window we looked at. We looked at a time frame of 2010 through 2019. And as you can see in that first um, results section, 9% of the parks, 330 parks, had not received any type of visit from HCD. Now there are, are different types of visits that can occur. There's the full inspection, there could be a follow-up on a complaint, or there could be a field monitoring visit. But for those 330 parks, we didn't see any evidence of any activity, any inspector going out to those, those parks for any particular reason. So that was a serious concern to us. The second area is related to a variety of things, again, related to the program. First of all, communicating with residents and park owners about an upcoming inspection. There are requirements in law that a pre-inspection notice needs to go out to uh, the owner of the park, but also be posted or shared with the residents so the residents understand there's an upcoming inspection. And there needs to be an orientation to not only the park owner, but the residents to understand what that inspection is all about. In addition, uh, we, we found that the uh, the inspectors were inconsistent when citing violations. So two particular uh, situations, one inspector may decide to issue a citation in that circumstance, per perhaps related to rubbish or you know, materials being left outside at a particular mobile home park. One inspector may consider that a violation, another inspector at a different mobile home park may not consider that a violation. So we saw inconsistencies there. Also, we found that um, the, the inspectors were failing to ensure that it promptly responded to complaints. So residents can file a complaint through a hotline with HCD, but when we looked at the response to those complaints, they need to be responded to promptly if it's an immediate uh, health and safety issue within five days. Um, if not, there's a 30-day window for uh, the HCD to follow up on that complaint. But we were, not, we were seeing they were not being prompt and following up on those complaints. And finally, um, residents weren't being given sufficient information, not only about the inspection process, but also about a situation where there is a concern that was raised by HCD. There is a violation that was uh, cited and the residents and the park owners need to have sufficient time to be able to address that uh, concern before a reinspection occurs. And they're supposed to have a 60 day time frame to be able to do that. And in some cases we saw that HCD was not giving not only park owners, but residents sufficient time to address the issue before that reinspection occurred. So we had serious concerns about, you know, communication essentially, making sure that not only park owners, but residents understand the program and understand the various steps that ACD needs to take. The third key issue that we're gonna step through is um, HCD really not managing the program and having information that they need to be able to effectively manage essentially workload and staffing. Remember the first issue I talked about is many parks had not been visited for any particular reason in, in a 10 year, uh, 10 year window. Um, from 2010-2019. Well, H, we ask HCD, do you have enough resources? Do you have enough inspectors? They have 47 inspectors, 24 in the Northern uh, District and 23 in the Southern District. They don't know whether that's enough inspectors or not. And part of the problem is they're not making sure that their inspectors are properly uh, accounting for their time, um, they're not managing the activities properly. Uh, in some cases, they may be charging uh, time to the wrong activity. So they need to do a better job of, a, from an administrative perspective, managing the program so that that will inform decisions about workload and staffing, et cetera. So moving on to the next page, we'll, we'll illustrate for you the, uh, the issue with respect to inspections. Can you make that a little smaller? Hit the, hit the negative, yeah, a couple times. Make that a little easier for folks to see. So as you can see, what this, what this graphic is showing you is of all of the parks under HCD's jurisdiction, the green is, those are the parks that they did visit uh, in that 10-year that window from 2010, 2019. So those are good. 
Then we see uh, a, a little bit of a grayish brown area and a yellow area. Those are parks for which an inspector went out, but it was for a specific reason, either for a permit, um, the yellow areas for a specific reason, perhaps a new construction or a modification to uh, an area in the park or a specific mobile home. The, the grayish brown area is re responding to a specific complaint. So those are very different than a full inspection, which is what the green represents. The red at the top is, is our, that's those 330 parks that I mentioned earlier that have never been inspected in the last, you know, that 10 year window. And as you can see, that represents 5,700 mobile home lots. So the state of California, HCD has no idea um, the conditions at these parks. Are they okay? Or are there serious uh, conditions uh, that need to be addressed either by the park owner or by the residents uh, residing in that particular park? So we really had some pretty significant concerns with respect to that. Moving on to the next graphic. So this graphic is about communication. As I said in a few minutes ago, HCD has a responsibility to notify not only the park owner, but the residents at the park. And as you can see, we looked at 30 inspections and I want you to focus on the red to start with. There are six, as you can see, four that were 31 to 40 days late, one 48 days late, and one 326 days late. What does that mean? All of those were sent out after the inspection had already taken place. You can see right below that it says day of inspection. So those came in after the inspection had already happened. What is supposed to happen is these notices are supposed to be sent out to uh, the park and the the residents are supposed to be notified at least 30 days prior to the date of that inspection. So in only three cases, were we able to confirm that HCD met the requirement. Um, as you can see at the bottom of the graphic, there were 16 notices that we couldn't, they couldn't provide the information uh, for us. So we, we have no knowledge, they have no knowledge as to if those notices were even sent or the timing of when those notices were sent. So there is a significant concern here as far as communicating with park owners and residents about that pre-inspection and certainly about the inspection itself. And those are important notices because that allows the park owner and the residents to understand what happens during an inspection, what are the types of things that will be evaluated by the inspector. So this communication is incredibly important uh, for HCD to be able to do and do well. Now the next graphic is these, these um, pie charts essentially. <clears throat> so this is what happens after an inspection. So the inspector has come out, conducted an inspection. Again, we looked at 30 inspections. We had two that were fine. There weren't any issues uh, when they inspected a particular park. So if you start at the upper left-hand uh, circle, essentially uh, on this graphic, you can see there were 28 parks that had a notice of violation. Unfortunately, what, we, what the, the legend shows you is for 16 of those, we don't know, and ACD could not provide us a date when that notice was provided to the park. It has to be provided 10 days after that inspection occurs, but we couldn't determine, nor could HCD tell us when that particular notice was shared with the park and, and potentially with a park owner, uh, re excuse me, a resident, if there's an issue with a specific mobile home lot. For 12 of those, HCD took more than the 10 day requirement. So for all 28, there was a problem. So if you go to the right and you see 23 parks with final notice of violation, this is a, after a re-inspection. So we go from the 28 to the 23. So five got resolved, but we still have 23 violations that are problematic. And ACD is saying this is what they refer to as a final notice of violation. Again, if you add up the 13 and the nine, you've got 22 out of 23 that were problematic. Then if we drop down to the 13, this is a final compliance order. This is, you haven't fixed the, the situation. We may be moving to the next item, which is a notice of intent to su suspend a permit to operate that mobile home park. Again, we're seeing problems with the timeliness of HCD sharing this information with the park owner and a potentially residents. So you've got 11 out of 13 that are problematic. The notice to suspend, you've got a little bit better here, but we still have four out of seven that were either, we don't know the date or it took longer than the 10 days. 
So really some, some significant problems, not only with communicating about the pre-inspection and the inspection, but after the inspection occurs, making sure that there's timely communication to uh, the park owner and the resident. And again, as I said earlier, uh, residents and park owners are given 60 days to fix the, uh, the particular issue. Um, but if they're sending out notices late and then they send out a new notice and they don't give the, uh, the park owner and the resident enough time to be able to correct the issue, you're going to be in this, in this not necessarily a loop, but you're going to be going from notice of violation to final notice of violation to a compliance order, et cetera. So uh, ACD really needs to uh, do a much better job at um, communicating with uh, mobile home park owners in California and certainly residents in California. Um, another issue, it's some of the bullets down below, and I'll just I'll just share with you uh, very quickly, is the once a, a violation is identified, one of the things that HCD is responsible for doing, and state law requires this, is it's that fourth bullet down. You need to share with residents what their rights are uh, and any resources available to them to assist in addressing a violation. So HCD was not notifying residents. You have the right to appeal. You can appeal informally in communications with HCD, or you can have a formal appeal process. If you wanna just fix the situation, HCD has a responsibility to provide you resources. Who's out there? What types of contractors are out there? Who can I turn to to help me correct the problem at my particular mobile home uh, lot? And HCD had that information on their website, but they weren't being proactive and sharing that information with residents. And we needed, we believe that's critically important uh, communication, again, that HCD needs to share with residents. Um, as far as the, the last bullet, responding to complaints, I talked about that a few minutes ago. They're often late in conducting those inspections. As I said, if it's an immediate health and safety concern, they need to get out there within five days um, because that's a serious issue and we were not seeing that prompt action uh, by HCD. So moving on to the next page, and this is the last page of the presentation, and then we can move into to questions and answers. This is about their administrative practices, their timekeeping practices. They lack accurate data with respect to inspector activities. What are inspectors spending most of their time on when we're looking at the database to see if they could do an evaluation of workload and determine whether they have enough inspectors. They don't have the data they need. The data is inconsistent. Uh, some people are inputting the information correctly. Some people are not. We didn't see supervisory review of, of these timesheets or the work that inspectors were, were doing. So we really felt there needed to be uh, strengthening in those areas. As you can see by the second bullet, five of 37 timesheets, they incorrectly reported the time for the inspection activities. If you don't have good information, you can't make good decisions about how to manage your program as efficiently and effectively as possible in California. So they, this is another area that HCD really needs to, to focus on and strengthen. We made 20, eight recommendations in the audit report. Um, what we did do in the report, which we often do now in our audits, is we had specific timeframes associated with some of these recommendations. Some we felt HCD could do immediately. In fact, we received uh, the first 60 day response from uh, the department yesterday. We have staff looking at that information to see if they actually are being responsive to the recommendations. There are some recommendations that we suggested they needed more time. So we gave them till January of 2021 and then July of 2021 for some other recommendations that we think will take a little bit more time. But here are some of the key recommendations that we believe the department needs to implement. Many of those uh, should be implemented by now. Uh, or in the next few weeks easily. So the first one, develop procedures for selecting parks. As I said in the beginning, they weren't looking at all of the parks and part of the problem is the methodology that they use uh, to determine which parks to visit each year. The second, document all inspections and field monitoring visits. Those field monitoring visits are a quick, easy way for HCD to take a look at a mobile home park and identify a problem that may lead to a complaint or may lead to that inspector recommending, we need to do a full inspection at this facility. Um, the third one, factors inspectors can, should consider when deciding whether to, slight, to, excuse me, to cite common violations. This is 
we need more consistency across the state and the various inspectors that are conducting the work. Communication, promptly mail those notices. Um, document when you mail the notices. Um, document the review of compliance within timeframes. Make sure your notices include all of the information. We were surprised to see that in some instances they modified some of their forms and uh, deleted information that was critically important for uh, park owners and, and residents to understand to have access to that information. They need to be monitoring compliance with timeframes, particularly related to complaints. Uh, they need to get out there timely, inspect uh, a complaint allegation and determine whether or not it's substantiated and make sure that the issue gets resolved promptly. And the last key recommendation, requiring staff to charge their time accurately because you know you, good decisions are based on good data. And right now, ACD does not have good data with respect to uh, the investment that the state of California through HCD uh, is putting into this mobile home uh, park inspection process and program. So with that, Senator, I'll turn it back to you. We'll stop sharing the screen and, and we'll go from there. Senator, I think you're still on mute there. <clears throat> We're having some technical difficulties here with uh, uh, on the center side, but we'll go ahead and start with some of the questions here um, that uh, we received, and then the senator will jump right on in here. Um, we'll start, uh, I think uh, uh, Senator Leva had requested we start with one of the most popular questions here. Um, and uh, lots of folks wrote in on poor noticing, and you discussed that a little bit, uh, uh, State Auditor Hal. Uh, Michael uh, from the the uh, Tahashan Terrace Mobile Home Park, uh, and also Dave Dave from Starlight Mobile Home Estates in Covina, and many others write, how significant do you view the failure to effectively communicate with park residents? And a follow-up question, do you have any recommendations regarding how to improve this, uh, and do we need new regulations? And I think you, uh, you touched a little bit of, upon that. State Auditor? Sure. Thank you, Eric. Uh, and great question. Appreciate it. And we absolutely feel that communication, and that's part of why I highlighted it in the, uh, the presentation, and we had it in our briefing document when we briefed members, uh, certainly Senator Leva, when this report went public back in July. Communication is critically important, uh, and not just communicating with park owners, but residents of those particular mobile home parks. So we had a variety of elements in the recommendations, uh, making sure that HCD is complying with those timeframes for the, the pre-inspection notices, for the, the notices of violation, for um, follow-up uh, inspections, et cetera. Making sure that the appropriate language is in those notices. As I said, there were some templates that were modified that important information, unfortunately, was deleted. And we brought that to HCD's uh, attention. Clearly making sure that you're informing uh, park owners and residents about their options. They can appeal a particular violation that uh, an inspector has, has written up. Um, so that type of communication is critically important to, um, again, park owners and residents. And making sure that residents, again, understand what resources are out there for them uh, to address a particular issue that may have been raised. With respect to needing new regulations, as, as we do on every audit, we assign a staff counsel on a particular audit and we look at state law, the attorney looks at regulations, and our, our conclusion as an organization, and certainly relying on our legal staff, they're outstanding, is there's no need for uh, modification to state law or to regulations. That, that's all out there very clearly. What needs to happen is ACD needs to do a better job of communicating, but also making sure that there is someone reviewing and making sure that the notices are getting out on time um, and the proper information is included in those notices. One thing we do discuss in the report is administratively, HCD has 
pulled in some of this information in, some, in a somewhat centralized manner now. So there should be improvement in the timing of when notices go out and the follow-up on making sure that uh, folks are informed about an inspection uh, or a pre-inspection orientation, those sorts of things. Um, but we absolutely have numerous recommendations related to notices and effectively communicating uh, with residents in mobile home parks in California. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm back. Uh, sometimes technology is wonderful and less wonderful. Uh, so we're going to go to a question from Carol uh, from El Nido Mobile Home Park in San Juan Capistrano. Carol asks, do we know why 330 parks were not inspected at all during the last 10 years? Well, that's a great question. And the answer is no, we don't know. And unfortunately, HCD can't tell us either. Um, part of the problem uh, is that uh, HCD's methodology for selecting parks, um, there is some statutory language with respect to making sure if there are complaints about parks, those parks need to be inspected. But what we felt is HCD needs to expand its methodology and the way they could include some of these parks is to, number one, make sure that they're doing a better job of, of documenting field monitoring visits, because we don't know. Some of these 330 parks may have had a field monitoring visit, which is not as extensive as an inspection, but certainly it's an inspector driving through the park, taking a look, seeing if there's anything that looks uh, problematic or raises an issue from his or her perspective. Um, but the other thing is we think that they need to expand that methodology and make sure that they're considering parks that haven't been visited for a long time and include those parks even if there hasn't been a complaint filed uh, with respect to that particular uh, park owner or conditions at that park. So we think they, they need to strengthen their methodology and hopefully some of those, uh, those types of situations don't occur again in the future. Great, thank you very much. So now we're gonna to go to Bobby from Park Royale Mobile Home Park in the city of Orange. Bobby asks, should the new policies and procedures developed to broaden the selection of parks to be inspected specifically provide that the 330 parks not visited at all within the last 10 years be prioritized for inspection? Well, similar to the, the, the question we were just discussing, Senator, and, and um, appreciate the, this question as well. And this is part of our recommendation is you need to broaden, you need to have, you HCD, need to have a methodology that really makes sure that every single park in California has the potential to be selected. Because if some park owners realize if there's no complaints filed and there's nothing, I'm never going to be subject to uh, an inspection. And there are so many parks, there are over 3,600 parks in California. So ACD really needs to be strategic about how they select uh, the parks for inspection each year. And absolutely, as we, we recommended, they need to expand that methodology to make sure they're considering parks for which they may have never received a complaint. It still makes sense. And it's important for them to get out and inspect some of those facilities. Very good, thank you. And this is all kind of in the same genre. Uh, Sandy from De Anza Mobile Home Park in Santa Cruz County um, wants to know if HCD has no written protocols for selecting parks, how have parks been selected in the past for inspection? Sure, and as I, as I indicated in my, my presentation, there are two regions in California. There's a northern region and a southern region, the two district offices. And the managers of those offices actually work with uh, the respective inspectors in their region and, and determine which parks they're gonna select. Again, based on the number of complaints they've received about a particular park, the severity of the complaint. And then they, as they refer to it, we discuss in the report, it's kind of an iterative process. They work their way down. So if there is a park that has had numerous complaints and the severity of those complaints is significant and HCD hasn't looked at that park for a few years, that will be a priority. They will want to do a full inspection at that park. But if they have recently looked at that park, they may put that park lower on the, uh, the priority list and decide to look at a different park, which is not necessarily a bad approach. But again, um, as we've been talking about, if there are no complaints about a park, it's unlikely that that park is going to be in the high priority list uh, to get an inspector out there and that the residents of those parks 
uh, may be living in conditions that are not safe and, and HCD would never be aware of it. So um, that's why we believe and we recommend it. There needs to be expanded methodology and it needs to be in writing and there needs to be proper guidance uh, for both the Northern region and the Southern region, the two district offices. That's great. I could not agree more. And I remember when we first uh, discussed the audit, those are some of the questions that I had as well. So I have another question. Uh, after visiting many parks over the last six years, some are beautiful and in great condition and what we would like to see at all of our mobile home parks. But there are some that are really not in great condition um, and they're in poor condition. So with that said, how important do you believe field monitoring visits are? Field monitoring visits are really important. And as I said, they're, rather than a full-on, uh, full inspection of a, a particular facility that can take a couple of days, in some cases four or five days, a field monitoring visit is really an efficient tool that inspectors can use uh, to visit a park you know, and within a short period of time, drive through the park, walk around a little bit and just observe. And if he or she sees something significant, they have the ability to file a complaint and that gets it in the queue and that, you know, elevates the priority of, of looking at that particular park. And it also brings to the attention of the managers of the two district offices. This is a park just based on a, a quick visit uh, to the park. I have concerns. I think we need to, to focus on this particular park. So these field uh, monitoring visits, which don't take a lot of time, really leverage the expertise of the inspectors by allowing them to to take a quick look at a park and then determine it, is it does it warrant further review uh, or does it not? That's great. I, I happen to agree agree a hundred percent. Our next question is from Linda from Orangewood Mobile Manor Mobile Home Park in Lindsay. Uh, she asks, what current guidance does HCD provide to its inspectors? Specifically, how can that guidance be improved? Great question. Um, we actually do have uh, some concerns. So when we looked at uh, what type of guidance inspectors receive, what type of training do inspectors receive? Um, there are training modules for new inspectors who are newly hired to HDD, and they go through those modules. It gives them general background about state law, what the state requires uh, with respect to inspections, uh, some tips and, and examples and how to use certain type of equipment to test electrical or utilities out at a particular facility. There are some procedure manuals uh, that provide some descriptions of violations, but again, we don't think the training is robust enough. It's not frequent enough. They get the initial training, then they may receive, an inspector will receive some on-the-job training, uh, basically shadowing a more experienced in inspector. But what we didn't see is refresher training. Um, even though building codes may not change too frequently, it's still worthwhile to have refresher training for the inspectors, uh, and they can learn from one another, certainly. Uh, we did see inspectors reaching out to one another to get assistance, uh, but there needs to be more guidance. Uh, we also identified with respect to determining how to cite something or when to cite a violation. Uh, we actually saw some federal information HUD actually has uh, in 2019 put together some real clear guidance for inspectors of low income um, homes uh, and it really gave more specific definitions of here's a situation this would warrant a citation here's a situation this perhaps would not warrant a citation. So um, ACD, we believe, and we recommend it, needs to do a better job of providing more specific guidance to inspectors. And that could be part of the, the refresher training. Here are the types of situations where you need, this, this warrants a citation, this does not. Uh, so we, we again made recommendations to strengthen guidance and strengthen training for those inspectors because they are critical to the success of the program. Excellent. Uh, they are critical. And if they're not trained properly and they don't receive follow-up training, um, we're really putting them out there at a real disadvantage. So they can't do their job effectively and it's clearly not helping mobile, uh, mobile home owners. So our next question is from Beverly, who lives at Heritage Oak Glen of Orangevale in Sacramento County. Her question is, is the failure to cite violations consistently due to a lack of training or no knowledge of the laws? 
Well, that's a great follow-up question to the discussion we just had, and that's part of the reason why we think there needs to be stronger written guidance. Um, and as I said, the federal government HUD proposed some new inspection guidelines and definitions, so I think the state could benefit from that, take a look at some of that information. We refer to that in the audit report. Um, but consistency was really a problem, and I think the inspectors, even my staff observed some inspectors out in the field, interviewed some inspectors, and they all felt it would be very beneficial to them to have better guidance as to what warrants a violation versus what does not. What are the types of things should I be looking for? Um, they certainly lean on each other, but the state of California through HCD could do and should do a better job of providing guidance. So there is consistency uh, from one mobile home park inspection to another and the decision as to whether or not a citation should be issued. So okay, very good. Um, we had actually a few folks uh, raise the next question, um, conflict of interest concerns. Hillary from Humboldt County and residents at Royal Park Mobile Home Park in the city of Orange are asking, what sort of conflicts of interest did you discover? Did you find cases where the inspector improperly sided with park management, even if the inspector has no financial interest in the park? What was the extent of the bias that you found, if any? Well, thankfully, we didn't see any specific instances of bias, but we do have concerns with how HCD carries out its responsibility to make sure that an inspector does not have a conflict of interest or that HCD is aware of a conflict of interest and mitigates it. So specifically what I'm talking about is the state of California and people in certain positions are required to file what's called a form 700 and basically that's a conflict of interest form and it lays out you have to report interest in property and other types of things there's a variety of things you have to report on a form 700. State law requires state agencies to review 20 percent of the form 700s and that's what HCD is doing. What we think they need to do is review every single form 700 or conflict of interest form that the inspectors file. In some cases, we found inspectors hadn't filed their, their conflict of interest form timely, so the department didn't realize that some were outstanding. That's one problem. The other problem is, again, they were meeting the statutory requirement of looking at 20% of those that were filed, but we think the, the work that these inspectors do is so important. Those individuals, every single conflict of interest form needs to be reviewed. Remember, there's 47 inspectors in California in this program. So it would be relatively easy for someone at HCD to look at every single uh, conflict of, of interest form to make sure that the individuals don't have an investment in a mobile home park. But the other issue that we brought to HCD's attention is, I may not necessarily have property at a, or own a mobile home park, but I may own a home close by. So am I going to be biased either to make sure that mobile home park is as well maintained and in great shape because it affects my property value or am, am I going to be harder on particular residents uh, in the facility? So we told HCD and recommended that not only look for ownership and the direct conflict of interest, but a situation that, that may raise a concern about someone's ability to be unbiased. So strengthening that review process, make sure people are filing those forms and then someone at HCD is reviewing the forms. If there is an issue, then you mitigate it. That inspector should not be inspecting facilities uh, within a certain radius of their residence, so to speak. Very good, that was a good question and great answer. So now we're gonna to move to Michelle from Diamond K Mobile Home Estates um, in Roseville of Placerville County and Roger from Lakeview, Lakeview, Lakeview Village Mobile Home Park in Citrus Heights in Sacramento County. They both ask, is part of the inadequate notice problem due to a failure to communicate to residents in other languages? We didn't see that as a significant issue. What we did see is, is we see that HCD provides the forms and the notices, et cetera, in English and Spanish. 
two primary languages in California. But, and also, uh, if there were other languages spoken by residents or park owners, ACD had the ability to either work with a, a member of the resident's family who was multilingual, uh, or they, they were able to get assistance uh, to be able to communicate with folks who don't speak English or Spanish. But again, it would be uh, prudent for HCD to really understand the different regions in the state of California. And if there are regions within either the Northern District or Southern District, where the primary language spoken of individuals in that region is a different language, they should consider uh, whether or not they need to translate some of their forms into other languages, maybe Cantonese, Tagalog, et cetera, those types of things. But we did see um, forms in Spanish, forms in English, and we didn't uh, see any concerns or nothing was raised, brought to our attention as to uh, a problem in HCD being able to communicate with residents at, at the parks. Well, that's a little bit of good news. And I agree we should, if there is a large a uh, group of folks that speak a different language, we should be able to communicate with them in the language they feel most comfortable. Uh, our next question comes from Martha uh, from Colonial Mobile Home Manor and Park in San Jose. And her question is, did HCD prohibit residents from being present during inspections or accompanying the inspector? Should that be allowed so that it is not just management's viewpoint that is being expressed? We did not see uh, HCD prohibiting residents from participating uh, in an inspection. And as I said earlier, the pre-inspection notice should go out to not only the park owner and, or it should in include the residents at the facility so they understand what's in, encompassed in a, an inspection. And they certainly have the ability if they want to, uh, to participate in an inspection. What we found in interviewing inspectors is residents don't particularly have an interest um, and following the inspector and, and uh, you know, basically shadowing the inspector during the inspection. But they do have the, uh, the ability to um, send residents or park owners away. So they wanted to assure us that these inspectors are operating independently. They are making sure that they are comparing the conditions at a particular park to what is required by building code and state law. So they are not being influenced in either way, either by a park owner or by a resident uh, with respect to the conduct of that inspection. But we did not see any evidence of any undue influence uh, from, from anybody's perspective. We felt the inspectors did a, a pretty good job once they got out there. Very good. And so if I'm hearing you correctly, if a mobile home park resident wants to be a part of the ins inspection, they can be. Yes, that's my understanding that they okay. have the ability to, you know, because they're notified when the inspection is going to take place uh, and then uh, certainly should be given information about what, what types of things the inspection will encompass. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, our next question is from Wynn from Belmont Shore Mobile Home Estates in the city of Long Beach. And his question is, how can we ensure that all violations are corrected before inspections close? Well, that's a, that's a great question too, because that was one of the concerns that we had is um, as far as making sure that things that were noticed uh, a violation is noticed that corrective action took place. And what we saw in some cases is maybe there were 10 items in a particular inspection that were problematic. Eight of the items were corrected and the other two uh, were still outstanding. And what HCD would do is in some cases they would close that particular case. And what they asserted to us is, well, we'll open a new case for those two remaining violations. But we never saw that. We didn't see that follow up. So what we recommended and that we believe needs to happen is there needs to be better supervisory oversight where a supervisor is going into the database and seeing the inspection that was conducted by a particular inspector, what are the different violations, when do we need to, has the notice gone out promptly, that 10 day window where the notice needs to get out there to either the park owner or the resident, and then when is the uh, follow-up inspection going to be conducted? And then that supervisor can, can monitor uh, what that inspector is doing and making sure that uh, the, the situation or the issues that were uh, brought 
uh, brought up in the inspection report are corrected. So they need to strengthen some of their processes there. And the primary thing is for supervisors to be looking at uh, information that inspectors are putting in the, into the database uh, and whether or not those issues are being corrected and followed up on promptly. Very good. Uh, so the, and our next question is from Linda uh, from Orangewood Mobile Manor Mobile Home Park in Lindsay, California. What sort of, and I think you may have kind of answered this, but I'm going to make sure, what sort of continuing education is currently provided to inspectors and should it be improved? Well, the answer is yes, it should be improved uh, because as we talked a few minutes ago, Senator, that there is no current requirement for ongoing training. So uh, a new inspector is hired by HCD. Uh, they go through some initial training, certainly educate them about state laws requirements, building requirements, tools they can use to test the facilities, water utility, et cetera. And then the on the job training by shadowing a more experienced inspector. But again, as we talked a few minutes ago, there is no refresher training. There's no continuous um, ongoing training requirements. So we think that really needs to change. And we recommended that there be periodic refresher training, uh, which would help inspectors, again, with respect to understanding all the requirements, understanding what uh, warrants a citation, and then we hopefully as a state would have more consistency from one inspector to the next. Excellent. All right, we're moving on to a question from Bobby at Park Royale Mobile Home Park in Orange. And Bobby asks, can you tell what the failure to track dates and timelines is a result of? Inadequate data entry or technology or just human error slash bad judgment? We don't think it's a technology issue uh, in looking at the database. Uh, and certainly we believe that it's a failure to, to input the data completely and accurately, and then not having that additional layer of oversight, secondary review or supervisory review to make sure that the information in the database is correct because that, that information is critically important to making sure a notice gets out there, making sure that follow-up uh, inspections occur, making, <clears throat> excuse me, making sure that a complaint is investigated timely and promptly and the issue is resolved. So it's really a people problem, not a technology problem to put it in simple terms and we think that if they do a better job in supervisory review that will lead to better and more accurate information getting into that database which will lead to more efficient effective operations. Excellent. So as a follow-up to that um, how do you think HCD should periodically monitor its compliance? Sure when we have recommendations related to that you're you're uh, your constituents have great questions and, and others <laughs> in California. These are, these are excellent questions. And this certainly is one. And, and an example we could use is for a complaint. So if a complaint is filed with HCD, as I said a few minutes ago or earlier in this, in this discussion, um, if it's imminent uh, danger to health and safety, they need to get out there within five days. If not, they have 30 days. And then there's a certain amount of time that the park has to correct the problem. So we need to make sure, as we were just discussing, that complaint gets filed properly. It's in the database. We know when it was received. We know who the inspector is that's gonna go out and conduct the inspection. And then me as a supervisor, I'm gonna be able to follow up and say, Connie or Senator, did you go out to that particular uh, mobile home park and conduct that complaint inspection? What's the result? Do we need to issue a notice? We need to make sure we follow up. So I think there needs to be, as we recommended, um, a strong database and then the ability for HCD to monitor. So if a complaint came in for immediate health and safety, they need to be out there within five days. So that supervisor should get a report. Hey, here are all the complaints that came in this week and X number are imminent health and safety. Who's scheduled to go out there and when? Is that within the five day window? Why isn't it? We need to prioritize those um, and then be able to monitor how successful HCD is and making sure that they get that complaint inspected and notice uh, sent out to the park so that the issue can be corrected. So there are different milestones in state law and certain requirements that HCD can be monitoring for the complaint process as well as the inspection process. 
And just so you know, you may always call me Connie. I won't always be a senator, but I will, but I will always be Connie. Uh, so we're down to our last two questions. Uh, one is from me. Uh, how do you feel about residents having a voice in the development of any recommended policies or protocols? Well, uh, that's, that's an interesting question because I think that the department should be primarily abs absolutely responsible for, for developing policies and protocols. Um, certainly residents can have input, but I think that's a responsibility of the agency because it starts with the state law. Their regulations should you know, basically expand on state law and make sure that their processes are, are in accordance with state law and are more specific. And then policies and protocols follow along with that. So it's really a responsibility of the department uh, to establish protocols and policies that really um, allow for an effective operation of this particular program. Got it. So I think what I would say to folks watching and listening is if you have ideas, get them to me. And then as a legislator, we can try and formulate something that becomes a law. Uh, our last question, and this came in from a number of folks up and down the state, and I think it's a good question and appropriate to ask uh, towards the end of our little talk here. What happens if HCD does not meet the recommendations that you say they should implement in a timely manner? Is there follow-up from the auditor now that the audit has been released? Well, there absolutely is follow-up. We, we as an agency do not have enforcement authority, so I cannot, as the state auditor, force HCD to implement all of the recommendations. But we do have a process where we not only inform legislators like, like Senator Leva, um, but also the public about what the department is doing to implement the recommendations. So a couple of key things. We have a follow-up process. After a report is issued, 60 days after the report is published, we published this report on July 9th. So September 9th, their first response was due to us. Staff have informed me we have received responses to many of the recommendations. What happens now is staff will look at the response and determine whether or not it's sufficient. Um, and after we've, we've done an analysis of it, that will be posted on our website. So any member of the public can go to the state auditor's website, pull up this audit report, you click on a link that says recommendations and it will show you what we recommended, what the agency asserts they're doing and what our staff believe uh, is happening. Is it partially implemented? Is it still pending or they haven't done anything? So that's something um, that I think would be very informative to the public. So that happened at 60 days. So we're working on that now. Then in six months, so that would be in January, July issue, July 9th. So early January, we should be getting a six month response. And then in July of 2021, we should be getting that one year response. Now, remember some of the recommendations that we made, we had specific, almost all the recommendations, we have specific months, the month of September, they needed to have some things done, the month of January, they had to have some things done, and the month of July next year. Coincidentally, that's when our six month and our one year. So the agency didn't say, oh, those timelines are unreasonable. So we should expect um, each of these recommendations to really have some uh, progress made certainly now, but other ones, hopefully when we can reconvene uh, yes. in Sacramento, Senator, and I can meet with you personally um, in January and then again in July. So we do have that follow-up process. Now, what happens after a year? They don't fall off their radar. After a year, what my office is statutorily required to do is put a report together of all the audits we've conducted for which agencies have not implemented a recommendation and they've had a fill, full year to do that. So that's additional information that we share with the legislature and again with the public. So we do have a very strong follow-up process and certainly partnering with, with members like Senator Leva is incredibly, incredibly important to my office because we're partners uh, in making sure that agencies in California improve uh, their efficiency and effectiveness to, to the benefit of the people of the state. So we do have that, that follow-up process. I would encourage the viewers to you know, visit our website and you'll see when that, uh, that first update gets posted. That's excellent. Um, 
even though you and I have gone over the audit, hearing it again, hearing the answers to our mobile home residents' questions uh, really helped me as well. So I can't thank you and your team enough. Is there anything you wanted to close on before I close this out? No, I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to participate in this webinar, present the results of the audit. I've always uh, had great respect for you and, and love doing work for you. And I certainly want to thank my team for a great job and absolutely thank uh, your constituents and other uh, residents in mobile home parks in California for sending in the questions that they sent. These were outstanding questions. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, share our perspective and our thoughts on those. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and thank you to everyone who joined the webinar today. Uh, I too hope that in the near future, we'll get to meet at town halls and meet in person again. But until that time, uh, there's a lot of information we want to continue to share with you. And we want to make sure that where you live is a place you love to live and that it is safe and everything that should be happening is happening. I would ask you to, uh, if you have any additional questions or would like to follow up with the, the select committee, please reach out to my consultant, Eric Guerra. Uh, I know many of you already know him, and his email is eric.guerra, G-U-E-R-R-A, at sen, well, at S-E-N dot C-A dot gov. So thank you again to Madam Auditor and to your team, and thank you all for joining in today, and I look forward to seeing you soon, and I hope you found this informational. Take care, everybody. Be safe. Thanks, everybody.